Good afternoon, team. It's me, Jay Song. I'm glad you joined me today. We're going to continue our analysis of XRP. I want to draw your attention to uh, some very important things. So, as we went over yesterday, why I love arches, if you haven't seen my video about it, I want you to take a look at it because it should shed some light on, on how bounces actually work. You know, we like those long bounces at known support points and there was three battlers here that have yet to come into play um that is not actually true the red line is actually still in play uh and it is on the daily chart so if we were to go quickly to the daily chart you can see um sorry the the you can see that when price uh, came up this day it went all the way down right to the red line and that was the first battler. Now that red red line was this on the daily chart. So if and it may be hard to see on the phone, um, if the price went up, came down, went back up, and then came down. So this line right here was marked in time because that was very that was significant in the overall run. There's another one back here uh, that could also be as an uh, be a support because, as you've seen, we actually had um, this very uh, long red candle um, at that time and then price came back up in those zones so bear bear in mind that those two the other one is this blue line that we marked um, for that top one so those are the ones that are still in play along with especially the phantom um, that we went over yesterday as well which I, I have been talking about for quite some time and it's uh, this long uh, line this yellow line right here we duplicate it and we keep the angle we don't change anything um, everything that you see is the same exact angle okay and if you ever mess up uh you you know you you do the angle just calculate the line again delete what you have um and then clone that same original line and move it back into position okay uh, right above and i'm drawing these from the top of the greens that's how you draw core to core uh, you can draw them wick to wick but sometimes it doesn't apply so i just want you to be aware uh in this in this case if we were drawing it wick to wick i do change it to a dash so that you know that it's on the wick area rather than the core area which is not as strong but just as powerful if you look at carefully you'll see that price is in fact reacting to the wick phantom you see price came up this day stopped right on there and we're sitting on this line so i just kind of saw that right now um, these lines are, uh, you, you want to make them exa exact as possible. Um, but we're talking mostly about the, the general rules. So, uh, these are other, these are again, just reasons why I'm bullish XRP and why I still see that we're going to be experiencing a bounce. I believe we are going to be coming up to the higher levels up into the dollar level, even though the next resistant line is 78.99 according to here we, we we went down from this major run and this is this is enough to possibly stop price we came down and then we went up and came down again and then went up and then came down to that level so this line has been tapped multiple times as a support until we finally broke through and then all those supports become future resistance lines so this may be enough to stop price in its tracks and price will have to pay the toll <clears throat> it'll have to pay the sellers. So basically, these sellers, um, the people who, who bought at these levels, actually lost money. So these people bought, 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 and they they all lost money. So they're like, oh my gosh, I wish price just came back. And if price ever comes back there, I'll get my money back. That's kind of the psychology behind how it works. So if they were buyers, they're going to sell their positions and if they sell they flood the market with supply so supply enters the market at these areas um and we know this in advance by just drawing that now there's a trick that price can do so it doesn't have to be flooded with supply and and this is what i want you uh this is one of the things we're going to talk about in today's video price has a secret and what it does is it uses setups to push through so quick that it that these people who were all planning on just breaking even now feel good again. Okay, let me explain. When price was back here, these people felt great. Okay, these people who bought in this area were feeling good. 
And then when price came down, they're like, oh, we're still good. And then we went here where we're having party. Hey. And then price started getting back in here. And we're like, oh, we're still fine. Because look, we're just trading in this range. We're fine. We're, go we're going to the moon, baby. We're going to the moon. And so they're feeling good. Okay. And then price went back up. And they're like, woo, yeah, we're still, we're feeling good. And then we went down. And then we came back up. And they're like, okay, well, we're not as happy. But we're still good. So what was happening is that there was actually distribution at these areas. And they didn't catch it. They didn't actually know what was happening during during that time. So if you were to draw some a few a few lines, you can you can actually see some of the story that was actually unfolding at these points. So I'm gonna explain that to you. Okay. So uh, this is on a daily chart. So <clears throat> there would have been there would have been more trade. So we would have saw if we drew core to core at these points we would have saw that price was actually distributing. The smart money was leaving the markets and leaving them to all these people high on emotions. And this is also why we have to take out emotions from trading. We can't be biased. We can't be like, oh, who team XRP, woohoo, XRP to the moon. That's not how I'm talking. You'll notice that I don't talk like that. I'm glad. <laughs> and I know that we, it will go to the moon. However, we can't be team, uh, team uh, XRP because what happens is when you're team XRP, you fail to actually see the reasons on why you should be selling. Okay. We would have saw that there was a sword cut at this pain marker. Okay. And then price came right to the underside of, of these points here. And then did a sword cut here. I'll show you where. Oops, actually, this is here. Okay. So a pain cut here. And, and how that worked on a smaller scale, this is a daily chart. But basically what price was doing is it was bouncing, bouncing, bouncing and came up and swung underneath that line. And then it's ready to go down. It actually tried came in back up right to the sword cut area and came down. So we would have saw weaknesses in here. But if you were so in your party mentality, you're going to miss this. You're going to be like, okay, we're fine. So now price goes down really quick and people are like, oh my gosh, Elon Musk's fault. Let's blame Elon Musk. You didn't, it's not Elon Musk's fault. You guys failed to realize there was major resistance levels at these points. Okay, major resistance and a fib match too. This is why I marked it with purple, okay? So the team that's partying may fail to realize how markets actually work. There was distribution. They're passing the money off on to you while they're exiting the positions and you're, the retail traders are not strong enough to hold up the markets and therefore markets can fall really, really rapidly without institutional support, okay? So now, where are we now? You have to pay attention to those points because it's part of the story. This one is all of the, this, this line represents all of those traders back in the beginning of that story who just want their money back. They'll be so happy if we can just get our money back, please. I've been negative for so long. Look, I'm losing thousands of dollars. Just let come up, please, please. And so what happened is this, and I'll show you what happened. Price is came, came up and didn't even touch the line. This is a known point. People, yeah, maybe I exited a little bit, but price only went about halfway and then sat down on its phantom that we talked about yesterday. Three major supports. The phantom wick, the phantom line, this blue support, this red support that I drew, which is really should be blue as well. Those are both those lines. Now, this one actually should really be red um, for resistance, but I'm just leaving it as blue because I've had it blue. So to draw your attention... One thing that price does at known selling areas is does a move that pushes past these and they usually happen in a night session like overnight. And it, what it does is it, it, it uh, it'll push through so quick that you won't that you won't have a chance to react. So these people who are here won't have a chance to sell back because they're going to be like, wait, wait, oh, we're in profit again. Oh, OK, well, we'll just stay. And uh, it will feel good. Now, they may not feel as good as they did before. They're a little more cautious now, but they're ready to react to that. Okay. Um, they're waiting for just 
the right time. So if price comes up really slow, they're definitely going to take the money and then we're going to see another larger arc or it could take several days. Or price could do something like this where it zigzags in this area. And we could see that very, see that too. Um, at the worst case scenario, if all of these turn into sellers and they attack that point, then price can go down. But I don't think that's the case. And the reason I don't think this is the case is because price doesn't want lower numbers. Uh, like, uh, price doesn't want lower prices at this point. Now, and I'll explain that in, in, in just a few more minutes. Going to a weekly chart, I'm going to show you some things that you never saw before. Actually, I'm going to show, I'm going to show you on this chart. But um, for right now, we're still on a daily chart. But I need you guys to understand the psychology of how markets actually work so you can understand price is not so random as you think. There's a reason for it. So what is most likely to be the case, and I'll give you another example of what, what's going on. So here, you saw me talking about these in some of my earlier videos. So if you watched my earlier videos, we talked about on the four hour chart, this was the, this is the resistance area. That level, we were going down, okay? But there was another battler and that was correct. And there was another battler in play. And that player was the weekly player. Okay. This weekly player was in the game. And you have to you have to remember he also is playing against you. So we're always playing. This is like a game. And it's a game designed to lose uh, to make you lose money. And you'll be successful when you find the real uh the real players, the biggest players. How do we move this? Gosh. You're going to be successful when we find the biggest player. So let's draw them. Okay. If, and, if, and I know we have a lot more subscribers. So people who are, who are just understanding these things, I'm going to show you where they are. So we had price come up to here and up to here. And if we connected those core points, they gave us this green line right here. Oh, not that one. They gave us this green line and I'm going to draw it core to core accurately for you on this weekly chart. So you know where those lines were at. So if price were to, uh, uh, price have, has gone up past these levels and if ever it comes down, then all of these people down here in this area, they all want their money back too because they were selling, hoping to short and then price boomed and they were like, oh no, please come down. We want those prices or I want to uh, complete my exit, my transaction. They're going to be exiting. They're going to be exiting in this area. Okay, this one. So if that's the case, you have to keep in mind those battlers and they're on the weekly chart. If you're just looking at like a 15 minute chart or four hour chart, you're not going to see them. So back to the story, the bigger players are down there in the, in the, in this, this down area. Oh my gosh. There we go. The bigger players are in this down area here, just waiting and overall, we were actually going down on the daily chart. So every day we were going down and I thought, oh, the crash is coming. But then we remembered these big guys are coming. So when we when we actually got below 52, you remember in the video, I said, hey, I don't think we're going right down yet. There's some support here. We need to we need to go high and then maybe come back down or come here. And until that happens, we're not going down just yet. And we weren't. But now we you you have to see there's battles within battles within battles and the bigger fish always wins so let's look at something quickly on a four hour chart this is what i think is going to happen there is weakness on this four hour chart and if you pay attention and watch anybody they may even show you this on a technical analysis but guys i'm going to show you the secrets of the markets and how they actually work if we were to connect the bottoms here, 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 and if you're following along, you can draw a four hour chart. You connect the dots, we get this big long white line. And I showed you guys, hey, I think we're, st we're still strong, we're gonna hit these targets. We haven't hit them yet, they're virgin lines. And we're gonna, we're gonna push through these lines. But what's happened is price did this, 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 and I said, how can we go down? The, really, the only way that we actually gonna go down is if we do this and reject off of that line and then we could be looking at lower prices. And what and what did ha what has happened? Lo and behold, we actually started going up. Who could have guessed it? Well, I told you guys yesterday that that is most likely going to be the case because of the 
the daily chart. However, there, if you zoom in on the four hour, there actually is a trade on here. Okay, so we are actually coming up to the underside of this, okay, which is that top. I think we're actually going to hit this, but what's most likely the case is when we hit this, two things can happen. And I want you to be aware of these things and why I'm not going to take this sell. Is it right that price will come down here, especially if you have indicators that are telling you that price is going to go down? Yes, it is possible. However, there is a bigger fish. Normally, that means we're going to be seeing lower prices. But if and, and that could be the case and it could very well be the case. But I'm telling you, I don't think so. And here's why. Because the bigger fish always wins. OK, so let's look at some things. We have some high vol. Let's look at volume for a second. OK, on volume, we're getting higher highs, but lower volume at these higher levels. So our volume is actually starting to go down as we're going up. So it's like a car. Somebody took their foot off the gas. We are not wanting higher prices. OK, at this moment. So that means that price should naturally go down. And yes, that's the case. But we're still, as I said, the reason I'm not really paying attention to this is because all of this is the buy zone. Now, before we continue, nothing in this video is financial advice. Uh, this is not trading advice. This is just for educational and entertainment and comedic purposes only. Bear in mind, I eat red crayons for breakfast and I often get tummy aches. If you eat red crayons, you'll also get tummy ache too. So take that as your own risk because uh, this is also not medical advice or cooking advice either, guys. Um, that's crazy if you re eat red crayons, so I want you to read between the lines uh, per my disclosures, okay? So I'm not paying attention to that because my main focus is the buy zone, which I've been explaining in my previous videos. So then if we are going lower price, aren't we coming down to here? Well, we have to have a reason first to go down. Like if price comes and touches this and bounces off of that line, then we can go down. But what most likely is going to be the case is this. I think price is going to come up and come and find support at this yellow line or even one of these others or the phantom again and build up the last part of support. And we're going to shoot through 79.95, 79.99, this price. We're going to shoot through it. And the reason I think is because we are way too close for it not to hit it. There has to be a reason. Why did we not just come and hit it and come back down? They did not want to wake up the sleeping giants in that area before. Okay. This, this was a huge amount of people that just can't wait to get their money back. They just can't wait. They're so at loss. There's a lot of them. They were like months worth of this from June 18th all the way to May 19th. There's a lot of people that lost their money and they're a sleeping giant and they're going to attack this area unless you can be sneaky about it. But isn't this negative? Look at the four hour chart. Aren't we going down? Aren't we going down? Remember. The bigger fish always wins. If, if volume is saying, hey, we don't want prices, then why did we go up right now? Is that the last test before we really go up? Or is there something else in play? This is what I want to tell you right after I filmed the video yesterday. So I got to make a part two to this video. So you're really going to see it. This is part two. Go back to the daily chart. The bigger fish always, always, always at least in my experience, wins because you have bigger players. This little volume here, means nothing in the grand scheme of things. What? How can I say that song? I'll tell you why. Look, when price came down to here, this was the volumes. When price was down to here, this was the average volumes. When price came down to here, this was the average volumes. When price came down to here, this was the average volumes. What does this tell you? Look, guys, we're going lower 
and lower and lower and the activity is going lower and lower. People are not interested in these lower prices in the grand scheme of things. Look at the grand scheme of things. Look at it. This big uptrend has a lot of ups and downs. We're still in an uptrend. How they say the trend is your friend. Look at the grand scheme of things and it'll help you wake up and smell the crayons. Okay, as I like to say. This is the grand scheme. The grand scheme is that we're still moving up. And as I showed you in the, in the chart yesterday in our, our log, logarithmic chart, that there is upside potential for almost $120. And depending on how you draw, it could be, you know, even higher than that. Now, will it hit $120 in the first run? No, I think we're going way higher than that. But I think, uh, I, you know, from the prophetic community, from what we understand, price is going to be hitting around $12 or so, pullback, and then going for a much higher amount. We'll be, I'll be there with you tracking this. Um, and if there's a good exit at $12, take some profit, good. And I, I hope we find it. Pray for me that I can find it, that we can see it um, and together, and that you can see it too, and you can also draw. But in the grand scheme of things, this is just a retracement. We're going up, then we come back, and then we do this. So this retracement area is to be acknowledged itself. We have lower, lower, lower hard closes. These are real hard closes. These aren't just like some of the other coins, guys. Look at this. The hard close of this date was 54, but the hard close of this one was 52. Price really did. Even though the wick is longer, that's not an up curve, guys. That's just hard closing lower. Now, we saw that there was major support on the weekly lines at that point. So, yes, that's exactly where price should go up, and it did go up. But now I'm telling you, let's look at the volume. If the gas is, if they're coming off the gas, on selling, that means they're not interested. The bigger players are not interested in lower prices. They are not interested in those lower prices. What does that mean? It means they're ready to stop either suppressing price or selling because, you know, manipulation looks a lot of different ways. And in th this type of market manipulation, not I'm not talking about other type of market manipulation, but this type of manipulation is happens all the time in the markets this type is bigger the bigger fish all of this is a lot bigger than just this okay this little fish here is small compared to this massive whale here in the room and if you fail to see it you're going to position yourself on the losing trade let me give you some stories. When I was young and I first got into trading, I would have my account blown out of the water. I lost so much money when I was younger because even when I started getting good at analysis, I failed to realize this core principle about the bigger fish. And so I would find these trades and I was like, man, this trade is set. This is good. You know, I'm like, man, this is this is a great trade. You know, I would be like on a one hour chart and I'd be like, yeah, look at this. We're right. We're, you know, we're, we're at a uh, we're coming up to here. We should be coming up. You know, there there's a, a, a sword cut here in that area. And, you know, well, maybe I didn't know the sword cut back then. But, um, you know, I was I was I was I was like, yeah, we're going to go down. And then, boom, prices go up. What happened? Or vice versa, when the price is going down, and I said, oh, well, look, at where, now we're going up because, you know, my indicators or whatever I was trading with back then. And then, boom, we went down more. What happened? I failed to realize. I would spend hours looking. What did I miss? What did I miss? Until I started realizing to zoom out, and you have to understand the game. This is like 4D chest. Uh, 4D chest. <laughs> 4D chess. There are players within players and moves within moves. And the bigger moves always trump the lower moves. So yes, yes, this is right. This is correct. Price should go down. But you have a bigger player and the bigger player is telling us, hey, we are done with lower prices. We're done at these levels. The volume is almost dried up. 
And if you compare them to some of the earlier moves, I mean, we were like, look at this volume. Look at this volume. Look at the averages. Look at the averages. We're like nothing compared to those days. The glory days back in February. This is telling us that there is strength coming in in this area. Price doesn't want lower prices. So then you start cutting these lines. Boom. And it gives you those points. And we're on top of those lines now. We're on top of that area. Now, can price come back down? Yes, it can. But we're taking the overall move in context. And this is why I'm not really trading a, 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 a one hour chart at these moments because to everyone else, it just looks like that. But if you read it correctly, you're going to see the moves. So I'm expecting on the larger time frames, price to actually move up. So to complete this video, yesterday we had the big arc, but then we have the larger players playing here and we want to pay attention that they don't want lower prices. So what has to happen for higher prices? Price has to set up. We didn't come and touch that 78.9 because they're planning on sneaking right through it. And this happens so many times. And I wouldn't be surprised that even though you have tons of traders who analysis is 100% correct. Yes, they are correct. But if you fail to see the bigger fish in the room, you're going to miss when price just goes right past it. Because you have more players than just these little players from June, to June tw July 21st all the way to today, to August 6th. You have major players who have been in the market for months, and that's who this run is playing against. So what does this look like to me? And I could be wrong, but to me, it looks like the setup before we go and push through and sneak right past these levels. Because if it goes straight up, then we're able to get to those levels. And sometimes there's windows at intersecting points where we can actually go through more points. And that's very likely the case. We may even bypass this whole range and just go right to those levels. And it's very possible. You know, I want to tell you something. And I was having a time of prayer the other day. And when I was praying, the Lord reminded me of two things. Some people were asking me about my, my dream about XRP. I want to talk about that dream that I had. And when I had that dream uh, about the delivery, right? In that same time, uh, at the moment, I can't remember which one was, you know, first, but I do remember this. And this is what the Lord spoke to me in my prayer time. And I want to share this with you. The, the dream about XR, the, the dream about the crash, and I don't know if that crash was XRP. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know specifically what commodity that was, but I feel like I feel is about uh, the cryptocurrency. But I can't say for sure, but I can say this. That was not a dream. That was a vision. And I remember because when I was in my prayer time, the Lord took me back to other points and parts of my life when I had visions. <clears throat> the Lord would speak to me visions back, you know, a long time ago when the Lord used to speak to me a lot in visions. And He took me to a vision and he, he, he reminded me that there's a certain feeling, there's a certain like, I don't know if you can call it a feeling, but it's like a signature that this is a vision and it's very different from a dream. A dream almost feels like abstract, but a vision, you're wide awake when it happens and yet it feels like you're immersed in there. You're, you're there at that moment, um, but you still know that your body's somewhere else. It's, it's, very, it's a very different feeling than just a dream and usually they're a lot shorter. And when I had the vision of the XRP crash, uh, I'm sorry, not the XRP crash, the, the plane crash. Uh, what, I didn't see the plane when, you know, I told you, every, and you can look it up in that video. I, I thought, oh yeah, it's just a dream. But no, it was not. It's, and I, I still remember it like I'm there, like I'm standing on that platform when I'm there at the situation. And it was part of the vision. The, the delivery part was a dream. And I had both of these right after a time of prayer. Um, on, on a Sunday, I wasn't really thinking about the markets at that time or anything. Um, so you know, I know somebody said, well, maybe it's possible that you were just really, you know, sometimes our dreams can be influenced by our, what we're really thinking about, what we're, what we're hanging about, um, you know, what's on our minds. And yeah, that's, that's true. And that can happen. 
Um, but I'm letting you know the the part about the crash and people throwing their lot with me, which I believe that means they were throwing where, where I was standing, which was the only thing that was coming to my heart and mind was XRP and how people will be casting their lot with me. Uh, that means people will be, you know, I'll let you watch the vision. I really do believe that the Lord was speaking to me specifically about how during a great crash, people would be coming and, 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 and investing uh, in the same types of things that I'm doing or trading the same types of ways that I'm trading. Um, and people would just be saying, hey, what is this guy doing? Why, how is he standing? Um, what is he doing? And they were salvaging everything that they had, their possessions and, and casting their lots in the same area that I was. They weren't giving them to me. They were seeing what I was standing on and what was behind me. And it was like this yacht type of thing. And they were throwing their, they were trying to save whatever they could. This dream wasn't about death. There was nobody dying in the vision, in the dream. There was nobody like drowning, like dead. It wasn't that type. I wasn't appalled. I was just like, wow, look at this great crash. Everyone in there was not concerned about their lives or survival. They were concerned about their possessions. So there's a lot of meanings in there that they were, this, this vision was specifically about there. But I want you to, I want you to let you know that I prayed about this and the Lord showed me specifically in my last prayer time, this is not a dream. The delivery was a dream. This was a vision. And I remember, and the Lord took me back to the very moment I had that I happened and where it happened. And the Lord showed me this was part of your part of a vision. And it was, uh, you know, after a prayer time. Um, so I wanted to say that. Um, the last thing I wanted to say is a, a vision I just had the other day when I was in my prayer time. People asked me, hey, did the Lord give you another dream? Nope, he has not. And I hope he does. And I said, he prayed for me. But later that day, um, though I didn't have a dream about XRP. I had a vision, another vision. This time I was in Japan. For some reason I was filming uh, in Japan. I was about to start filming for, for YouTube when two, two, uh, they were like two children with black hair. They were like two, it was like, they look like Japanese children. I didn't catch their faces. I just remember they were giggling they were happily and I was pleasantly interrupted in the middle of my filming. And they came running, running, and they come right through my tripod and right through my camera and right through the middle of the screen. And they were, they were like two paths that came right down the middle of the screen and they were laughing and they, they, they completely interrupted my video and my plans. And I remember this feeling. I was pleasantly surprised. And... I asked the Lord, Lord, what does that mean? And after my prayer time, I I uh, I went to uh, I went to really contemplate these things, and I said, Lord, what does this mean? What what I had re what I had got the impression was this has to do with your plans and what you had before. Now that day, I was actually planning on filming a uh, a video where I actually had calculated some trend lines, and those trend lines were like here, here, and here. And I had pasted them like on a on a certain uh, color, but what happened was, I saw these intersecting points. I was gonna make this video, and the Lord said to me, "Don't make the video. Pray." And that's why I really felt in my spirit. I said, "Okay, I I won't make the video. I'll just go and pray." And I didn't make a video that day. And I think that was, I think that was Monday. And um, I just I just didn't make a video. And I I told the Telegram group I uh, and the I said, hey guys, I, I, I'm not going to be making a video today, uh, um, but um, the Lord's sharing me some things. Um, so, what I, after I prayed, and I, uh, I had this vision, and it had the same signature as the XRP, uh, I'm sorry, as the, as the crash uh, vision. And uh, it also had the signature of some of the other visions I had in my life that the Lord remembered that when He used to minister to me, um, you know, back in the day. Now, um, I'm not saying I'm a perfect man or anything like that, guys, um, because the Lord's used me and I, and I, there's times when I've left the Lord in my heart. Uh, there's times I haven't lived a righteous life. There are times when I've, I, you know, I have to come to the Lord just, just as everyone has to come to the Lord. We all have to repent of our sins. We have to turn from our wicked ways and we have to, uh, live the life the the Lord is leading us to live. But the Lord can still speak to you. He can share things with you. Um, and I, I had, I had prayed and, and the Lord says, I'm going to pleasantly interrupt your plans. 
Now, I really think he was talking about those little plans of the little trend lines because I believe that there's something's going to happen. And this is, and I can't prove this, but I just felt like those lines I had drew that were just going to be nothing and that price was something was going to happen. And, and, and those lines will mean almost nothing because of, of how a movement price will go. Well, right now, fast forward a few days later, these are the lines I see. 78. 89. Now, I'm not saying price can't come back here and, and, and go through those lines, but that would be a very, very good setup. I'm still very bullish. Now, we could be wrong and price could still come down here, but unless we have a right setup, I'm not selling XRP, at least not right now. But I can tell you this. I've been trading long enough to see price sneak right past through resistance lines that were known for the purposes of getting stuff done. Uh, of just getting those better prices, and it's called the markup. And if you if you guys study uh, VSA, we we had one we had one here. You know we had one here. Look, a live example. I'm gonna give you this live. Um, here's a four hour chart. We drew the resistance here, straight like you know that line's a little crooked, but the line is still there. And we also drew this when we were down here. And we knew there was support. Price didn't stop and come back down at that level, did it? No, it didn't. What did price do? It went right through that line. You can't see that, that's white. Price went right through that line. One candle went right through that line. And then we came back down and took them as momentum up. Did the same thing. I mean, we came, we came down to that. It's taking those momentum and using it against where, where normally it would be resistance. On the other side, it becomes support. If, if you're bouncing a ball on the floor and you hit a roof, that roof is going to make the ball come back down. But if you can ever bounce it so strong that it breaks through the floor, the ball comes back down, it's not going to come right back down. It's going to bounce up. And that's how price action works. So I'm, I'm really glad to share these things with you. I want you to continue to pray, but I have a feeling that my plans will be pleasantly interrupted. Okay, now I'm not a perfect trader. Um, I, I use this to teach you all uh, technical analysis. Uh, I've been watching price action for 19 years. Um, I look young, but I've been watching price a long time. Um, just... Just remember, guys, that, you know, um, just be in prayer about all of your decisions. Some of you guys wondered, you know, what should I do? When, when, when is a good pullback? Well, I've been telling everybody that I think this was a great pullback. And I haven't been focused on the, on the four hour. I have been looking at the daily. And you guys watch me in the chart room because I, I see that the setup is as such. And I like this setup, as I, as I explained yesterday in the video. I, I really think that this is this is time. And sure enough, you know, it gets it gets scary when you see price coming through this. But if you look at how many times price is still holding on to the blue line, it's using all of these these momentum up here, all of that. It's using all of that and you're sitting on it like it's a box. And I think this thing's about ready to pop. I've seen it a lot of times in trading. I think it's happening on XRP. There are other setups on other cryptocurrencies, but I like this setup on and, and XRP. And if I was going to choose a time on when I think price is going to come up, coming after a time where we're on a weekly trend on a double bottom with price telling us we don't want any more lower prices and price itself is the best indicator, I think we're ready to go. You know, that's just what I feel. And, and uh, you know, you everyone can pray about this. Please don't crucify me if I'm wrong. I want everybody to pray about these things. But I'm just letting you know what I see. And, and, and I, think, I think we're coming close. I mean, it's been several days that we're in this area and we're not going sideways. We're actually positioning. You know, people, oh, we're, XRP's doing nothing. No, it was arcing very nice, like we talked about. So if you haven't seen my video yesterday, we do an explanation about that. Uh, go ahead and uh, take a look at that video. It's going to share a lot of light. Um, anyway, I wanted to share this video with you. I'll get it out to you today. Um, remember, friends, the, the only true happiness that comes doesn't come from money or how much money you make. The only time you'll actually get real peace 
is you, if you invite the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart, make Him the Lord and Savior of your life. He will forgive you of your sins. It doesn't matter if you lived a wicked life. It doesn't matter how many times you failed others, you failed God, and you failed yourself. The Lord will pick you back up. You know, I believe we're coming into a time where we're about to experience a great revival in our land, um, in America. I believe that the seasons are going to be a season of redemption, restoration, healing. Um, there's going to be an awakening for a lot of people. I believe all these things are coming soon upon our land. And there's going to be things that are, uh, you know, scary for a lot of people. I believe the Lord, just like price moves into position, the Lord is going to move you into positions. Some of you need to have the wealth of the wicked because it is laid up for the righteous, as the Bible said. Some of you are going to need money. Um, some of you are going to need to have the wealth that the Lord has, has been pushing you to have. And some people are, are being led to investigate XRP and what it is and what, you know how the world money system is actually set up. And you know they have nothing to do with you know the Bitcoin club or the XRP club, but actually what XRP is actually set to do. Some of you have no idea about investing in cryptos and some of you have found this video. I saw yesterday we have, uh, I saw today we have like 533 subscribers. I'm really surprised. I was walking the other night, you know, we had like 100 subscribers and the Lord spoke to me. He said, I'm going to explode your channel tomorrow. And uh, I, I, I didn't really believe him and I was I, I was having a conversation with someone I, uh, and it said the same thing. I said, I think the Lord's going to do something with our channel. Um, and, I, and, I, and, and I think that's exactly what's happening. And I, I don't know what to do about all of you. I have, I have people who come to me who are traders, who are just trading up and down. And then I have another set of people who have no knowledge of anything. Like XRP, what, what is happening? And they just want to be on the right side. So I, I just will let you know a couple things. First of all, I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to do my best, okay? As long as I have an internet connection, I'm going to do my best to, to be there. And though I'm not really there on Sundays, I, I'm there throughout the week. Uh, I'm on Patreon. If you make a donation, you can join me on Patreon, or you can just join me for free on Telegram. Um, sometimes I do have exclusive content about other things on Patreon, about other cryptos. Right now we're doing gold. Um, and um, but on but you know if you're if if the if you've been put on your heart that the Lord's been putting in your heart about XRP or your family have told you to watch my videos and and this is your first time tuning in you know welcome and God bless you I don't know all what's going to happen in the future but I can tell you that the prophetic community has been reaching out to me uh, many times in private and and they've been telling me about things and and they've been praying for me and speaking to me and speaking over my life and, 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 and making themselves available as well. Um, soon, you know, I'm going to be sharing videos of, uh, you know, talking about people who are having dreams about XRP, about some of the prophetic things. I'm trying to organize it all. And uh, there's a lot of information to cover some things about gold and silver and, uh, you know, other things that, that, that the Lord is re revealing, but he's doing these things in our time. And it's right there in front of you. Um, the Lord can speak to you just as just as He can speak to anyone. Um, I heard the the Fireside Grace uh, minister, the 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 pastor there. He was a minister in the Fireside Grace Ministries. He's on YouTube. Uh, he was having a, a a test, you know, where he was saying, "Listen, I'm gonna," I, I, you know, he he speaks over good things. But there was a video where he was saying, "Listen, I I believe the Lord's gonna be awakening prophetic gifts within all of you because the Bible says that He does." desire above all things that you would prophesy there was well uh, brother paul in the bible apostle paul he was uh, preaching he said i wish that all of you would prophesy um because it's very good um and he wrote down something and he said i'm, I'm not going to tell you but what this is but it's a tree and i want you to i want you to go in your prayer time and ask the lord hey lord show me what the type of tree this is and um I was tempted to, you know, just, he said, and then write it down in the comment section. I, I was tempted about write, write down the first thing I got. And I said, no, I'm going to go to my prayer time. I completely forgot about the tree. But during my prayer time, uh, I said, I was praying about many things. And then the, the Lord reminded me about, uh, about the, what the, the tree. And the, the moment I do that, I felt that signature of the vision where it's like a certain feeling came over me. And I saw, I saw a tree. 
And he said, write down the tree and why. And I saw, I saw the tree and I won't say what it is. I want you to watch the video. But I was pleasantly surprised when I watched the video, the next video he had talking about the answer to what the tree was. And I was very surprised that the Lord can really still speak uh, in visions and he can share those things. The Bible says, seek to me, call to me, and I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. Um, Jesus said that I wish to share many things, many more things than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will lead you and guide you in all, in all understanding. The Holy Spirit is still alive. He's here on the earth. Jesus said, unless I go to the Father, I won't be able to send the Holy Spirit to you. So Holy Spirit is here on the earth. He is God with you and inside of you. And the Lord can actually speak to you. If you'll spend time with him, he'll spend time with you. He'll, the Bible says he'll make his home with you. Um, so in those same ways, God is there for you. Um, I'm just a man. I can only give you knowledge, but the Lord can give you, you know, he can quicken your spirit to things that are beyond charts, that are beyond the things you may see in your social media and your followings and your YouTubes and your, uh, all the things that you're, you're doing in your life. He can, he can really prevent disaster on you. Um, and there's times that things are a part of your path. There was a story in the Bible when, um, you know, I think it was when Paul was, uh, was going to go to a certain city and, um, and the prophets came to him and they came to him with chains and bound up. And they said, this is what's going to happen to the man who goes to there. This is going to happen to you. Something like that. And, uh, he said, he said, he basically said the, the people were saying, don't go, don't go. Look at, look at, look what the prophets are saying. The prophets are saying, it's going to be bad if you go that way. And he said, why are you breaking my heart? I have to go. This is this is this is for me. I'm supposed to do this, and it was a, it seemed like a terrible decision. And yet there was a part of the Lord that was speaking to him, but also being fair to him, saying, "Hey, this is going to be dangerous." Now I want to say this one last thing: this path of trading is going to be very dangerous. We've received in the prophetic community that you're going to see price doing something like this, hitting twelve dollars, coming right back down, and then hitting higher numbers. Some people saying 50, some, some of the charts are showing 120, some of the, you know, the price can be higher and then coming right back down. And then they said, there's going to be another boom where price will come back down, come up and then come back down. And some, I, I think had Dodge had something to do with that. And then people are going to be so tired of the manipulation that happens because they're going to keep seeing these ups and downs and people are going to be buying here at the top and they're going to be losing a fortune and they're going to get out and then price is going to go up and they're going to be even more mad. And you're going to see a lot of that. And if you're listening, please remember this day, August 4th, that I told you these things. This is what the prophetic community is revealing. Ups, downs, ups, downs, ups, downs. And some of the prophetic community is saying we're going to be able to buy XRP at 25 cents. And yet my charts are showing me we may hit higher numbers than that. So how does that, how does that figure out? Well, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm letting you know this day, on August 4th, before these things happen, the prophetic community has been reaching out saying, hey, hey, Song, what's going to happen is we're going to expect some really, really big that. There's going to be fortune maids and then people who are going to be selling and then buying back in and then selling. But there's also going to be people who are buying up those tops and then losing everything on the way down and exiting here and then prices are going to come all the way back up. What does that mean for you if the Lord told you about XRP? It means what I tell people from the beginning. I'm out there like a surfer, surfing Humanga Dunga, the biggest waves. And, I, and I'm buying and selling. I'm selling all the way down because that's who I am. That's what I do. I'm a trader. But there's a lot of people here who should not be trading at these moments. And they should really just be holding XRP. If, if, if the Lord's put it on your heart, that, hey, it's just, it's just my time to hold it, then you shouldn't be worried about any of this or any of, that or any of these things. You just hold it and put it in a safe and come back next year. If that's all it takes. Some people say, well, I want to be able to sell, make profit, and then buy it back cheaper. And you can do that. That's what I do. But I'm telling you, it's going to be scary. And I don't need anyone here in the community crucifying me when these things happen. I do my best to get as much profits as I can because I'm a trader. And then I show people what I'm doing. Currently, I'm in um, XRP. I have a very small position in XLM and XDC. Okay. But my majority of my position is in XRP. Um, that's what I'm really doing. Yeah, I have, uh, I have other things I don't tell people about um, that are not cryptocurrencies, but I'm just letting you know 
what's what's really going to happen is it's going to get a really really scary sometime in the future and there's going to be a lot of people saying when do we get out when do we go i can tell you this i'll do my best when i see the patterns emerges that if price uh we get to twelve dollars and price starts doing that or ten dollars i'm going to start cutting those lines and and i'm going to start slicing with my crayons and I'm going to, and then I'll say, hey, I think we we should be exiting. I see a sword cut. I see, you know, the volume. I see this or whatever things I see. I'll let, I'll let you guys know. And then if I tell you, hey, I'm out, I'm going to take my profit. I'm going to get back in at a certain range. I'll let you know. Okay. When I get back in and I'll be here for you guys uh, as best I can. I can't promise you riches. I can't promise any of those things. This is not trading advice. This is not financial advice. If the Lord's put it on your heart about XRP and he's told you things about it, then you're in, then maybe you're in the right place. And maybe this is for you and for, for people who do. But I can tell you I draw price maps and I can I can help give you an edge on the things I see because the charts and the way you draw maps can let you see things way in advance, way in advance. This is a daily chart. We've had these lines for a long time. We had these lines since before we broke uh, before we really broke the top, we, we've been able to see these lines. Now, we don't always know where the phantom is until price does, re, re, you know, correct. But when we do, we're able to start seeing those lines in advance. We're, we're able to draw and, and, and kind of read price. And, and that's just what I do. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm maybe not be the best in the world, um, but I, I can just give you what I have. And this is, this is what I have. And for XRP, as a free gift, I give it to everyone. I do other cryptocurrencies on my um, Patreon um, I post daily updates on, on the biggest things I see. Um, so I love you guys. And uh, just spend some time with the Lord and, and just ask, pray about it. Some of you guys, the Lord's going to say, hey, just buy it and go go away because you're you're going to be too worried. I have people who join me and they're constantly looking at like a 15 minute chart. And, you know, you see that and this is this is going to be this and it's going to look crazy. You know, are we going up? Are we going down? Are we going up? Are we going down? What's happening? I don't know. And they're not getting any rest. Look at this up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I'm like, gosh, I don't understand. And they have these crypto apps that only it'll say 1D, but that doesn't mean one day like on here. It doesn't mean the same thing. Those those mean. That means only one day's worth of trading. So like that would be, you know, like a, a one minute chart worth of one day of trading. And it's going to look something like this and it's going to be insane and you have these lines and you're like oh my gosh what is happening look at this and you don't understand what is actually happening because you should not be looking at those squiggly lines they give you on their apps those apps are to make you compulsive those apps are to get you to buy and sell and buy and sell and buy and sell and buy and sell and, sell and you have no idea what you're actually doing so unless you are a trader you probably shouldn't be just buying and selling and buying and selling if you want practice, get a demo account and follow along with me. But, you know, I've been here. I've been in XRP since about right there. 67 cents from since my last call. Since uh, it's on my other charts. We're still in profit. And I'm still confident in this setup. I like this setup. The curves look great. And I'm happy. Um, and I'm just waiting. And I have peace. And I'm able to sleep. And some of you who are trading, you're new to price action. You have no idea how to read price action. You haven't been able to sleep. So maybe this should give you some rest. We're still looking good. Price action is looking healthy. And I want to give you that. May the Lord bless you. Lord, please give a speak to everyone, Jesus. Lord Jesus, please speak to everyone who and, and, and let them know where they should stand. If they should be trading... Um, let them practice their trading skills. Let them practice their drawing skills. If they should just be holding, just give them peace uh, when everything happens. Lord, for those watching and, and uh, for all the new subscribers, just bless them. Be with their families tonight. Be with them. I, I don't know their faces. I don't know them, but you love them and you care about them. You know their lives. You know who they are. You care about each and every one of them. The things that you speak to their hearts are more important than all the money and investments and trades in the world. Money can always be, be had and, and gotten. But true happiness and true peace only comes from you, Lord. I put them in your hands, Father. I ask that you would raise up, uh, raise up the prophetic community 
in a big way in these coming revivals. Raise up the soldiers, Lord, the, the warriors. Raise up the evangelists, Lord, to go send forth the messages. Your messages and your words. Raise up the pastors, Lord, and the leaders, the local shepherds over your people. Give them strength to endure when the hard days come. Or let, give them strength against every temptation. Give them strength against every trial. Lord, I pray that you would raise up the worship leaders. The people who will be opening the very portals of heaven. To come down and to release your heavenly angels upon the earth in a strong way. To, to bind up the darkness, Father. You will give us the strength and give us the, the heavenly armor, God. The helmet of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Having our, our belt with truth. Having our feet shod with the gospel of peace. And having the shield of faith. By which we may extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. All the attacks that the enemy launches. Guard us, Lord. Give us your fire. And cover us with a hedge of fire. I'm so grateful for every single person listening to the sound of my voice. And I know there are people who should not be here. Let them also know who they are, Father. But for those who are assigned uh, to join me, Father. Or join, I pray that they would they would join me. I pray that they would uh, be encouraged and have peace, and I pray that they would um, be uplifted and encouraged during these videos and during these times. I love you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.